Hi, I'm David Krantz. And I'm Lisa Brooks. And today we're going to tell you a story about a new vesicular neurotransmitter transporter. And we think it's very interesting because it helps us think about a long-standing biochemical mystery. And it also tells us something very interesting about the way our brains uh, allow us to have sex, in this case, fly brains. So by way of background, vesicular transporters are the proteins that are responsible for putting all classical and amino acid neurotransmitters into synaptic vesicles. If you don't have vesicular transporters, you can't get neurotransmitter release. There are very few of these proteins known. The question we were interested in is, are there any others? Are there any other vesicular transporters? Are there any other neurotransmitters that you might expect to be out there to fill some hole in the literature? And in fact, the biggest hole in the literature that we know of is mushroom bodies. They're critical for learning and memory, they're critical for integration of sensory information, but nobody knows what the neurotransmitter is in these things, and nobody knows what the vesicular neurotransmitter is that's required to package neurotransmitter into the cells that are in the mushroom bodies, the Kenyan cells. And what we found is when we cloned Portobello and we made an antibody, is that Portobello protein is expressed in the Kenyan cells and all the intrinsic fibers of the mushroom bodies. And here we see anti-portabella, portabella labeled in red, and OK107 driving GFP, which marks the mushroom bodies. And you can see that it, the, this protein is expressed in the lobes, in the calyces, the dendrites, as well as the cell bodies in the larva, and it's also expressed in the adult. To explore the function of Portobello, we generated a mutant using uh, imprecise excision of a P element that was near the gene. When it hopped out, it took part of the Portobello gene with it. So to test the function of Portobello, we uh, started with a behavior that's a, a classic mushroom body behavior, and that's olfactory learning and memory. We see that they indeed have a learning defect, um, and their performance over time um, was consistently lower than wild type, uh, suggesting that they're, they don't have a problem with memory, but the, the problem uh, lies in the initial learning. We went on to test another behavior that's been associated with the mushroom bodies, and that's sexual behavior. So previously it's been tied into uh, aspects of male courtship behavior, uh, and what you see now is a demonstration of Drosophila courtship. This involves a, a pattern of behaviors that the male has to perform successfully to get the female to mate with him. So he will follow the female around, um, he will generate a song by extending a single wing and vibrating it at a specific frequency, he will tap and lick the female, and it's totally up to the female whether to mate with the male or not. So we looked at courtship behavior in our portobello mutants, and while we saw that the male performed all of the steps in the courtship ritual, he spent less time doing this courtship dance compared to uh, wild type flies. But what we saw after courtship, when the flies uh, successfully copulated, was dramatically different than wild type. The first video here shows what uh, copulation looks like in wild type flies, and it's pretty boring. But what you see instead with portobello mutants is much more interesting. So you can see here, uh, the male is really struggling to stay uh, connected to the female. She is kicking him and she's walking around and, and he has a lot of trouble maintaining uh, his positioning throughout copulation. We also wanted to know which parts of the brain were responsible for the sexual behavior and whether the mushroom bodies can be involved. So to do this, we used a, uh, a mushroom body driver called OK107, and we drove expression of Portobello in the mushroom bodies to see if this could rescue the copulation phenotype. We were able to rescue the sexual behavior phenotype successfully with OK107, meaning that the mushroom bodies are involved in copulation, and this hasn't previously been shown. We next did a genetic test to see whether Portobello might actually function as a vesicular transporter. We mutated sites that are absolutely required for VMAT transport activity and found that this blocked the ability of Portobello to rescue the copulation deficit in vivo. On the other hand, we find that other sites that are not absolutely conserved but are required for VMAT transport can be mutated in Portobello and still rescue copulation activity in the mutant. And what this tells us is that even though Portobello functions like a vesicular transporter, it's different than known vesicular transporters that it's related to. So what we think this means is that we've discovered not only a new vesicular transporter, but a new neurotransmitter system. What is this new system and what is this new neurotransmitter? We don't know yet, 
but we're working on it and we hope to have an answer very soon.